by Genevieve Berend. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Seven: Things to Remember in Using Your Thought Power for the Production of New Conditions. One: Be sure to know what conditions you wish to produce. Then weigh carefully to what further results the accomplishment of your desire will lead. Two. By letting your thought dwell upon a mental picture, you are concentrating the creative spirit to this centre, where all its forces are equally balanced. 3. Visualising brings your objective mind into a state of equilibrium, which enables you to consciously direct the flow of spirit to a definitely recognised purpose, and to carefully guide your thought from including a flow in the opposite direction. 4. You must always bear in mind that you are dealing with a wonderful potential energy, which is not yet differentiated into any particular mould, and that, by the action of your mind, you can differentiate it into any specific mould that you will. Your picture assists you to keep your mind fixed on the fact that the inflow of this creative energy is taking place. Also, by your mental picture, you are determining the direction you wish the sensitive creative power to take, and by doing this, the externalisation of your picture is a certainty. 5. Remember, when you are visualising properly, that there is no strenuous effort on your thoughts to hold your thought forms in place. Strenuous effort defeats your purpose and suggests the consciousness of an adverse force to be fought against, and this creates conditions adverse to your picture. 6. By holding your picture in a cheerful frame of mind, you shut out all thoughts that would disperse the spiritual nucleus of your picture. Because the law is creative in its action, your pictured desire is certain of accomplishment. 7. The seventh and great thing to remember in visualising is that you are making a mental picture for the purpose of determining the quality you are giving to the previously undifferentiated substance of energy rather than to arrange the specific circumstances for its manifestation. That is the work of creative power itself. It will build its own forms of expression quite naturally, if you will allow it, and save you a great deal of needless anxiety. What you really want is expansion in a certain direction, whether of health, wealth, or what not, and so long as you get it, as you surely will if you confidently hold to your picture, what does it matter whether it reaches you by some channel which you thought you could count upon, or through some other of whose existence you had no idea? You are concentrating energy of a particular kind for a particular purpose. Bear this in mind, and let specific details take care of themselves, and never mention your intention to anyone. Remember always that nature, from her clearly visible surface to her most arcane depths, is one great storehouse of light and good entirely devoted to your individual use. Your conscious oneness with the great whole is the secret of success, and when once you have fathomed this, you can enjoy your possession of the whole or a part of it at will because by your recognition you have made it and can increasingly make it yours never forget that every physical thing whether for you or against you was a sustained thought before it was a thing thought as thought is neither good nor bad it is creative action and always takes physical form therefore the thoughts you dwell upon become the things you possess or do not possess End of chapter seven